Harris, and I'm going to be your host this evening. So let's jump right into the announcements so we can get to the teaching. We have a guest minister tonight who is Pastor Dwayne Sheriff. You are going to be abundantly blessed. So let's get right into this. So um, first of all, this is an interactive Bible study. We want you to type in your questions as they come to your heart. And then about the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program, we're going to get to as many questions as we possibly can. Also, I want to mention gospeltruth.tv. So gospeltruth.tv, all spelt out, you guys. We want you to jump over there. If you want to jump over there right now, then you will not experience any interruptions or anything like that. Gospeltruth.tv. That's where we're putting all of our live streams, all of our live format is going on gospeltruth.tv. Uh, so you can email us questions, which I think is really cool. You can email or text us questions. So you can email us at livequestions, plural, at awmi.net, or you can text your question to 719 212 2 Five five five. That number and that email address should be uh, appearing on your screen. So make sure and do that, you guys. We want to get to as many questions as we possibly can, like I say, the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program. Also, um, this is a viewer-supported Bible study, and so uh, this is kind of the mother of all Bible studies. Let's get into that right now, actually. So uh, Tuesday nights were the original Bible studies that Andrew and Carrie started uh, years back, and there's something special that stands out from the rest of the Bible studies that we have, and that is um, you can get the Bible study notes. So the teaching you're going to hear tonight, if you sign up for the notes, you will receive those, those notes uh, the following Monday morning. Okay, so how you do that is you're going to go to awmi.net slash study. You're going to fill out the form and have your information in there. And then um, you are entered in to win a... Uh, a drawing of a free material. So last week we gave away Andrew's book of The War is Over, and the winner of that was Jim Powell. So Jim, they will be contacting you, getting your address and getting that book sent to you. And then tonight, uh, Pastor Dwayne Sheriff is giving away his newest book, Our Union with Christ, or I'm assuming it's your newest book. Um, so tell us a little bit about this book. Well, this book is titled Our Union with Christ, and I wanted to name it Married to Jesus, but my publisher didn't feel like people would uh, understand that. So Our Union with Christ deals with marriage and our natural marriage and what it points to, and literally then our union with Christ, our marriage to Jesus. And man, I define what a marriage is in this book. I define why do we get married. I did a survey, Julianne, years ago as a pastor. Why did you get married? Oh, no. And I was shocked at the top five answers that were all wrong on why people get married. And the Lord began to minister to me that if we're confused about natural marriage, then I'm certain we're confused about our marriage with Jesus our union with Jesus. So marriage points to something unseen. It's something seen between a man and a woman, male and female, that points to Christ and the church. And so this is a book that'll help you in your relationship with the Lord. I talk about Jesus as our husband. I've never I talk understood. about suffering and how that the Lord suffers with us in this life and through the sufferings of this life. And so I'm really proud of this book and what the Lord put on my heart, and I know it'll be a blessing to even your children because we have a generation coming up that doesn't even know what a marriage is. Mm -hmm. And I define what a marriage is, who created marriage. I even teach in here why God made us male and female. There's a reason why God made us male and female. And you just need to get the book, and of course this one's free. <laughs> so <laughs> if you sign up for the Bible study notes, you will be entered into a drawing to possibly win this book. Otherwise, I would encourage you to go buy one. I'm going to go buy one, especially if you've already signed up for the Bible study notes. Um, you're, you won't be entered in the drawing. So I think the best way to go would be to Pastor uh, uh, PastorDwayne.com. Is that correct? And you can purchase these, this book, and he has some other great books. I would encourage you guys to all go there and do that. So we're giving that away. Um, also, we have some upcoming events. So we have the ministers conference coming up, which is just like it sounds. It's for ministers. If you are a minister and you need a time of refreshing, I would encourage you to sign up for the ministers conference. That is going to be October the 4th through the 8th. We also have women arise conference. Uh, that is going to be October 28th through the 30th. 
No men allowed, sir. I get it, I get it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going back on the road to the Dallas Gospel Truth Conference, and that will be November 11th through the 13th. So you guys, we got so many amazing things going on. You can check out more details about these events by going to awmi.net slash events. Also, um, as I mentioned before, this is a viewer supported live Bible study. This is only brought to you through the partners and the gifts that come into Andrew Womack Ministries. And I know if you're like me, my life has been radically touched and changed through this ministry. It's the power of the Word of God, but it's brought to us in such a way that we can digest it and understand it and implement it in our lives. And if that's happened to you, it's happened to thousands of others, and you can be a part of it simply by giving. So please don't hes hesitate. Give them a call. Uh, you can also go online to awmi.net slash give, or or you can give us a call at 719-635-1111. Also, when you call that number, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, Monday through Friday. They're also there on the weekends from 7.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. And they are trained in their authority. They know who they are in Christ Jesus. They can direct you towards Andrew's supplemental over 200,000 hours of free material he has on his website. Um, or, you know, they can direct you towards the Word of God. There's no reason you're going through anything right now alone. So please don't hesitate. Give them a call, 719-635-1111. And I think that's it. The only uh, thing I didn't mention was our schedule of our daily live Bible studies. So Mondays and Fridays, we have Bible study at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays are at 6 p.m. and bright and early Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m. and that is all mountain time. So make sure and tune in while we're live so that you can submit those questions and we'll get to as many as we can. So, whew, I got through all, <laughs> all of the announcements, Pastor. So we are ready for whatever you're bringing us tonight. Uh, let me introduce Pastor Dwayne Sheriff. He is pastor of Victory Life Church based out of Durant, Oklahoma. Is that how you say it? That's how you say it. If you're from Durant. <laughs> if you're from Durant or Durant, however Durant. you want to pronounce it. So it's one church. Is it 12 locations? Yes. Is that correct? I got to tell you guys, if you've never heard Pastor Dwayne, this is what happened to me when I came to Karis Bible College. Um, Pastor Dwayne was coming to minister to the student body and somebody asked me, have you ever heard Dwayne Sheriff speak? And I was like, Dwayne who? You know, <laughs> no, I've never heard. I am here to tell you, you guys, there, he is an anointed teacher called of God. I listened to everything he shared that morning. He was teaching in night school. I came back. I went to night school to hear him teach. This is a gifted teacher right here. And um, so we're ready for you. Well, thank no you pressure. so much. You're <laughs> yeah, really uh, super kind and I'm grateful and I appreciate even the opportunity to share. And I just want to dive right into this. Uh, I have it on my heart and I just shared with the students today on the subject of offense and being offended and taking offense. This is such a serious, serious topic and yet many people have no idea of the danger associated with being offended and getting offended. Our culture right now is literally saturated with offense and the consequences that the Bible speaks of in regards to offense, you can see them everywhere. And this is just something we all face. It's something I don't care if you're a convert or you've transitioned from a convert to a disciple and you've went from immaturity to maturity, uh, you're going to still face offense throughout your life. And we have to learn to process offense and taking offense or getting offended. And again, what I've discovered is most people do not have any idea of the consequences or the danger that offense creates. And so a lot of people are struggling and they can't figure out what's wrong and their lives are just in turmoil and they don't realize they've taken an offense. That offense has morphed into a form of unforgiveness. That unforgiveness, if unresolved, then morphs into bitterness. And the book of Hebrews chapter 12 says that a root of bitterness has sprung up within many of God's people. Not a few of God's people, not some, but many, and defiled them. So this is, this is pretty serious. And one of the most popular series I've ever done is on offense. We do have a book that we're working on in a manuscript to get that out as quick as possible to help people process us, process offense better, uh, work their way through it. 
and out of it and things of that nature. So let me just give you an overview of this. In Psalms 119, 165, the scriptures say, Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing will offend them. Now that, that statement is profound and it needs to sink in. I need to hurry, but that is over the top. Great peace have they that love thy law. I love the law of God. I love the Word of God. I love the Scriptures. And that says that if we love God's law, God's Word, the Holy Scriptures, we'll have this great peace. And listen, nothing will offend us. It's amazing. Now that is over the top. And I remember reading that, and I was a young pastor, and I remember communing with the Lord and saying, Lord, where are these people? <laughs> As a pastor, you'd like to meet some people that love God's Word and nothing will offend them. My hairdo's not going to offend them. My colloquialisms are not going to offend them. Yes. My mannerisms are not going to offend them. And so I'm praying about this and saying, Lord, where are these people? Evidently, people do not love your Word. And just in the process, the Lord began to minister to me, instead of trying to find people that are not offended, why don't I become one of those people? Amen. I need to be the person maybe you're looking for that is not offended, that refuses to take offense, that I've learned the danger of it. I've learned what the enemy's doing and, and I'm not going to take it. Offenses will come. We'll look at that scripture here in a minute, but we do not have to become offended when offenses come and we do not need to be overcome when offenses come. And so the scripture that recently the Lord spoke to me out of is out of the sower sowing the word or the seed. It's a parable Jesus told, told in Mark chapter 4. And again, we're on a time constraint here. And so I just want to extract from that parable one major point as it relates to offense. Because I didn't understand for years what was really happening when I took an offense, when I got offended. And Jesus is teaching that our heart is like ground and God's Word is like seed. And if it's sown in good ground, it will produce a harvest, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But then He gives us three other types of ground in how Satan steals the Word of God out of our heart. And I just can't teach on the others. I just finished a brand new series on the mystery of seeds, the mystery of seeds. And I'm so excited about what's happening and how people are receiving from this. And it's just transforming our church and, and others. But let's look at the second ground. He said there were four grounds by the wayside. That was hard ground, a hard heart, mm -hmm. and how it won't produce like God intends it to. The second was stony ground. The third was ground with thorns. And then the fourth was good. Well, look at this statement on the second ground that he called stony ground and how Satan steals the Word of God out of our hearts. Verse 16 of Mark chapter 4, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the Word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time afterwards when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Mm. How does Satan steal the word of God out of our heart? Through all these hardships, through all these tribulations and trials and persecutions, they are all for the word's sake. The enemy sends these things against us, dear ones, to steal the word of God out of our heart because the only threat to Satan is God's word in my heart. I'm not a threat to the devil independent of the Word of God. I'm not a threat to the devil and his powers of darkness and wickedness in this world in and of myself independent of Jesus. Amen. No, it's the Word of God that gets in me, takes root, and I begin to bear fruit, and that fruit is over and against the works of darkness in this world. And so I'm sitting here, I'm reading this, and the Lord speaks to me, and I mean it hit me like a ton of bricks that offense is not about offense. And I'm thinking, okay, God, where are we going? Yeah. Taking offense is not about being offended. It's about Satan stealing the Word of God out of your heart. Wow. Every time you take offense, that's Satan's weapon against you, either getting offended at God. How many people do you know, be honest, that are offended at God? They've quit church. They're not reading the Bible. They're not pursuing God. They're not operating in His kingdom. They took an offense 
And what did Satan do through that offense, through getting offended at the church, offended at God because you didn't see something work out like you thought, offended at the preacher, offended at somebody sitting in your seat <laughs> at church. I mean, you name it, I could spend hours just going over all the offenses that people take, not realizing that's the devil stealing God's Word out of your heart. Wow. Well, once I saw that, I'm telling you, I made up my mind, I'm going to have great peace and love the law of God and nothing shall offend me. I'm not going to take offense. The opportunity for offense is all around us yeah. because this is a weapon of Satan to cause barrenness in our lives, to cause us not to bear fruit in our relationship with the Lord. As I began to search this out, I saw the danger and deadliness of offense. And again, I wish I had more time. I've got an entire series on this that's absolutely free if you'll go to my website and you can download it. But when you look at King Saul, this guy was set in by God and he took an offense at David. Yes, he did. David went out on a war campaign and came back with a great victory. David was loyal to Saul. David loved Saul. David never raised his hand against Saul, and yet he's coming back from this campaign and there's this welcoming party and the ladies specifically are dancing and singing and shouting and they, they're singing a song. David has slain his 10,000, Saul his 1,000. The Bible teaches he took offense at that. That offended him. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it, saints, but after he took that offense, his life, his personality got distorted. Yeah. His life began to unravel. Listen, he lost his kingdom, he lost his family, and he literally lost his life because he didn't process that offense. He got offended at David for absolutely no reason, and yet it just damaged him greatly. And on and on we can go. David made a mistake when he went to get the Ark of the Covenant from the Philistines who had stolen it and he's going to bring it back to the city of David. And he's bringing it back on a cart that was built by the world. And God had given protocol on how to move the Ark of the Covenant and it was to be moved on the shoulders of the priest. And he's trying to bring the glory of God. The Ark of the Covenant represents the glory of God, the presence of God, the covenant of God with us. And he's trying to bring that back to God's people and he's using the world's method to do it. We cannot bring this great awakening that I believe is happening. We cannot bring the glory of God to the church in the measure God wills through the methods and ways of the world. We have to do it God's way. Yeah. And so the ark began to rock as they pulled that cart over a, a, a threshing uh, floor and Yusa just simply reached up and I, I, I don't have time to explain this. I didn't even and wasn't able to explain it today because it used to bother me that he just reached up to keep the ark from falling into the mud. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against him and God struck him and it offended, it offended David. Mm -hmm. And so he parked the ark at Obed-Edom's house. Yeah. And Obed-Edom related properly to that ark unlike the Philistines did and his entire house got blessed. He began to prosper. He began to see health. He began to see all the goodness of God. And word got back to David that Obed-Edom is blessed because of the Ark of the Covenant. See, David got offended, and the good news is in three months he processed the offense. Right. Men are bad about this. We pout. We get the poochy lip. We kind of, when we get offended, we start with the poochy lip, <laughs> and then we get angry. And then if we don't process it, we mess up our lives, our homes, mm -hmm. everything you can think of. And so David, thank God, processed the offense in three months and he went back to get it and he brought it back properly. You can study all that out in 2 uh, Samuel chapter 6. Now here's what's interesting. He's bringing the ark back. Yeah. And he's doing it right finally. And Michael, David's wife, got offended at David dancing. Now this is powerful. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it's the last verse. I think it's verse 23. It says that from that point on, she became barren. Yep. She bore no more fruit when she took that offense and didn't process it. I need that to sink in. You need that to sink in. The devil is trying to offend us every day. Get offended at your boss. Get offended at your spouse. Get offended at your kids. Kids getting offended at their parents. Mm. Get offended at church. He is absolutely bent on 
knocking on the door of your heart for you to take offense so that he can steal the Word of God out of your heart and you become barren in your relationship with the Lord. God still loves you. I'm not saying you won't go to heaven. I'm saying you'll experience a lot of hell on this earth that God never willed for you to experience. Amen. And I could give example after example. Moses didn't get to go into the promised land because he was offended at the children of Israel. He got angry at them and God spoke to him to, to speak to that rock and he struck the rock <laughs> with his rod the second time, which you can't do. That, that rock was a type and a shadow of Christ and you, you can't crucify him afresh or a second time. He had already struck the rock the first time and water came out of that rock enough to take care of all the herds and all of the people of Israel. That was a powerful miracle. Now God tells him to speak to the rock, but he gets angry at the children of Israel. He gets offended and he strikes the rock. And for that, he couldn't go into the promised land. Man, I wish I had more time. I love sharing on this. Naaman was a leper in Syria, a commander of the Syrian army. And his wife had a servant girl that was a Hebrew and she told the wife of Naaman about Elisha and how he could get his healing from leprosy. And so, so Naaman goes to, to Aram, his, the king of Syria, to get permission to go down in to Israel and meet with Elisha to get healed. And that was pro proper protocol because had he done that without going to the king and getting permission, it could look like that, that he was a traitor and that he was... Uh, anyway, a spy. And so that was important that he did that. And the king said, you can go. So Naaman goes to see Elisha to get healed of leprosy. And, and he's met by Gehazi, Elisha's servant. And the servant of Elisha tells Naaman, if you want to be healed, go down to the river Jordan and dip seven times and you'll be healed. Naaman got offended. Boy, I can picture that. I, I could tell story after story of, right. as a pastor when I didn't show up yep. and I sent somebody, people get offended. I've seen people in the hospital and an associate would come to see them that I sent and they get offended that I didn't come. Yeah. Boy, that's not real bright when you need a healing. Right. So let me let that go. But the bottom <laughs> line is Naaman got offended because Elijah didn't personally come out and tell him. And then second, Seven times in the River Jordan, the muddy Jordan, he said there are cleaner rivers in Syria. And he, he stomped off with the poochy lip. <laughs> he, he, he stomped off just murmuring and complaining. And I dare him send out a servant. And I dare him tell me to go in that muddy. The good news for Naaman and the good news for you and I is we need to surround ourselves with people that are sane. Amen. We need to surround ourselves with people that love Jesus. And when we <laughs> enter into a piece of stupid like that, yes. can help us process our way back out of that. His servants begin to talk to him and say, what do you got to lose? Why are you getting offended? <laughs> we need to do this. Mm. And Naaman processed the offense. He went and dipped in the river Jordan seven times and was miraculously healed. Get this, listen to me. Had he remained in that offense, he would have died of leprosy, which was not God's will for him. Wow. How many things are happening to us because we didn't process offense? We didn't deal with it. Listen at Luke. Before I get there, let me go to Luke because I'm running out of time fast. Boy, it goes fast. Mm -hmm. Luke. Uh, chapter 17 is where Jesus taught on offense and the danger of offense, the deadliness of offense. The word offense in the Strong's Concordance in the Greek language is the Greek word scandalon, scandalon. And the definition of offense means to stumble or to fall. It means a trap stick. Now, tread water here with me for a minute. A trap stick, it's a trap stick. It's a trigger. It means a trigger on a trap, closing the trap down on an unsuspecting victim. In other words, if you know what a mouse trap is, and there's some of you maybe in the, in the deep inner city have no idea what this is, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not trying to offend you. This is a mouse trap, and, and those of us that live in the country, and I found out Julianne was raised in the, in the country on a farm, so she, she's awesome. But this is a mouse trap, 
and if they'll if they'll at least look at this little bar hanging down. I hope you can see that. This right here, believe it or not, is called a trap stick. And listen to me carefully. It's literally called a scandalon. Hmm. Think about that for a minute. It's called a scandalon. And it's a trigger that sets a trap on an unsuspecting victim, or, or if you could say a mouse. Now, I'm from Oklahoma in the Texas area, and I'm telling you, I got a mouse trap four times that size. And because we don't have mice, we got rats. I mean, these things are huge. And, and there's nothing better than the sound. That's the sound. <laughs> there's nothing better than the sound of a mouse trap going off because you <laughs> bake that thing, you set that trigger, and you listen, and suddenly you'll hear that mouse trap go off. It'll go bam, flop, 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 flop. <laughs> it's a beautiful sound. Bam. Flop, 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 flop. Oh, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> I don't believe it. We tried the time, man. We did it. It's I know, better. I totally it's failed. better the way she did it. Here's the deal. When you get offended, that's not what's going to destroy your life. That's the trigger. That's the trigger that releases the bar of unforgiveness, the bar of bitterness. So true. And many Christians are going through their whole life Flop, flop, flop. Yeah. They're just flopping around like they're trapped. How did it start? It started with a scandal on. What do I mean? It started with a trigger. What was the trigger? What was the, the thing that entrapped them and sprang the trap? It was offense. It was offense. Mm -hmm. Listen to what Jesus said here in Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Then Jesus said unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. I'm going to have to teach this as I read it quickly because I'm running out of time. But Jesus just said, it's impossible, but that offenses won't come. In other words, he's trying to tell us we live in an offended world. Mm. We live in a world of offense. We live in a world where every single day you're going to get an opportunity to be offended. Again, by your boss, a fellow worker, a preacher, a church. I talk to people all the time that are offended at the church. And they're not connected to a local church. They don't even understand the purposes of God anymore. That the church is what Jesus is building. If you want to be a part of what Jesus is doing in the earth, you better get hooked up to church. Because he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. Satan uses the church many times as a vessel of offense because he wants you to get offended at the church above all offenses. Because if he can get you disconnected from the church, he'll get you disconnected ultimately for your your destiny and your divine purpose in life. And so Jesus said, look, these things are going to come. You're going to get offended at your spouse. You got to process it now. You're going to have opportunity to get offended at your children. Children do things that can bring an offense to a parent. You can get offended at your parents. Parents aren't perfect. So I could go on and go on. Jesus is affirming it's impossible for you to find a place where you won't get offended or tempted to be offended. There is no place. You can work for a ministry like this right here. <laughs> it's one of the top ministries I believe in the world and you can get offended. And that's a trap. Yes. I've learned, man, that when offense comes, I smell cheese. Because as soon as you put that cheese on that little, on that little mouse trap, that rat smells that cheese and unsuspectingly goes and touches that cheese. It releases the scandal on and then they're trapped. So every time that offense knocks, you need to go, I smell cheese. Amen. I am not going to take the bait. Amen. I'm not, I can choose to not take the bait. Now this gets serious and I got a minute or so left. <laughs> and this is just tearing me up. He says, listen, though offenses are going to come, woe unto him through whom they come. Mm. See, it's one thing for me to get offended. But it's another thing now for me to carry that offense and offend other people with my offense. See, the process of offense is fourfold. When you smell the cheese and you take the bait, the first thing you do is nurse the offense. You just nurse it. You just cuddle and coddle it and you just nurse it. <laughs> the second thing you do that's deadly is you, is you rehearse it. You go over it and over it in your brain. I can't believe they did that. I can't believe they said that. Can you imagine they did that to me? Don't they know who I am? 
you rehearse it over. You go to bed at night, you're laying there, and it's like the late night show. You replay the whole incident. Then the credits start coming up, <laughs> and you realize, what? Wow, it wasn't just Joe. Elizabeth had something to do with this. And, <laughs> And the sad thing is the movie doesn't end. Like when the credits are over, it starts over again in your head. So yes. you rehearse it, rehearse it. Number three is when you get in trouble, you disperse it. Mm. See, it's one thing for a generation to be offended about sexual purity. It's another thing to take your offense now and teach little children sexual perversion. It's one thing to hate our country and just despise it, and you be offended at how evil this country is, it's another thing to defile an entire generation to hate their country. Jesus is teaching, it's one thing for you to get offended, it's another thing to carry it. Now, I got to hurry here, and this is huge, and I apologize, I'm going to drop a nuclear bomb. <laughs> he says right here, woe unto them through whom they come, through what comes, offense, it were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and be cast into the sea that he should offend one of these little ones. Mm. I, I, I've met a handful of people that believe what Jesus said. Jesus just said, it would be better for you to have a, a concrete necklace around your neck and be thrown into a lake than for you to get offended and become a vessel of offense now and destroy people's lives with your offense. The fourth thing in that process, they nurse, rehearse, disperse. God's will is that we reverse mm -hmm. offense in our lives the minute it knocks on our door. I got to quit, but one of the most powerful illustrations that I've ever given happened today. It, it just shook me to my core as I was sharing it. I don't know if it's right to watch forensic files. I'm not trying to promote watching forensic files. Some people would think, man, you don't need to watch that. I'm, I'm good with that. I just love catching the bad guys. Yeah. And I love how they catch the bad guys. Yes. And so I was watching this one episode and this man kidnapped a mother and two daughters and took them out into the ocean and he, he raped all three of them. And then he tied concrete blocks around their legs, taped their mouths. And the two little girls that had just been raped had to watch their mother push, being pushed overboard and sink to the bottom of the ocean. Then the second child had the concrete blocks tied to her legs and the sister had to watch her sister pushed off the boat and sink to the bottom. And then the third girl, the same fate. I can't think of anything more horrific than that. I, I, can't, I can't let my mind go there. I just can't imagine the terror, the horror. What's, what could be worse than that? Jesus said, that would be better for you than for you to get offended and carry that offense and destroy your children's lives, destroy your neighbor's lives, destroy your church with your offense. That's how serious this really is. Wow. And I'm telling you, that hit me even today in a greater measure that I know offenses are going to come, but I'm not going to take the bait. I'm going to be wise as a serpent, a type of Satan. I'm going to be as wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, and I, I guarantee you, Jesus wants to heal your heart today. He wants to cleanse your heart of any offense. He's right there knocking on the door of your heart to cleanse it right now of being offended at your spouse, being offended at your kids, being offended at your church. You fill in the blank, but I want to encourage you to let it go. I've got teachings on how do you do that. People get mad and offended at me when I say what I just said, and they go, well, how do you do it? Offended at that. There is a process of letting things go, of learning how to forgive, even what some people would call the unforgivable. And I deal with those in the series. So all I can do now because of time constraints is encourage you to get the material. It's absolutely free. And I hope this has been somewhat of an encouragement unto you to not become barren in this life because of offense. Amen. Amen. That's amazing. And I believe they put it at the bottom of the screen. It's pastordwayne.com is where you can get that information. So I'd encourage And the series is called Taking Offense. Taking offense. Taking offense. Yeah, it came in a package deal. That's, it's huge. And you know, I've watched, since I went to Bible school, uh, people that have um, uh, 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 graduated Bible school yep, yep. and fell off the way. Yeah. When we all heard the same thing, yep, yep. their common denominator yep. is offense. You can, I, I'm, I'm trying to encourage you to search your own heart right now, yes. but I guarantee you, everybody around you, it's amazing 
and I used to really wrestle with this stuff in my yeah. church. The, everybody heard the same message at the same time, but this guy falls off the rails. And when you talk to him, he's offended. He's offended at the, 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 the p political system. He's offended at, uh, you, you fill in the blank. And, and you've got to repent of that, get cleansed of that, and then fruitfulness just begins to abound. I got so many scriptures on how to bear fruit okay. in that series and, and just want to encourage you to deal with this in your own heart. But I guarantee you, like you just said, Julianne, there, there are people, your parents probably, you've got family, that their lives are, are, are self-destructing, they're imploding, and it's because they're angry, they're offended, and they didn't deal with that offense. And look, it turned into a root of bitterness. Yeah. And, and like King Saul, it'll warp people's personality. My mother died embittered. She got saved literally on her deathbed. I led her to the Lord finally on her deathbed. But I watched this meek woman, kind, sweet person just turn into the most embittered uh, human being and poisoned with offense toward God. She got offended at God because she thought God killed her son, my brother, and she didn't know how to process even the offense at God. I guarantee you, if you're watching me right now, you got friends and family that are offended at God right now because they think God did bad things to them. They think God took their kids. They think God's making them poor. They think God's doing all these bad things to them and they're offended at God. And that's exactly what Satan wanted. Yeah. That makes you stony ground. And God wants to heal your ground. He wants to heal your heart. And he wants to make your heart soft again. And again, I can't encourage you enough to get that series because even forgiveness, people don't understand forgiveness. I wish I could have taught on just forgiveness with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as a pastor for nearly four decades, people don't know how to forgive. No. I'm talking about born again, spirit filled people. They don't know how easy it is. They are confused on what it is. And so the devil deceives them and locks them into some form of unforgiveness, which is carrying an offense and they become fruitless. So I know we got to quit. Yes, as much as we don't want to because it's so huge and especially this day and hour. So thank you guys for the questions. We're going to get to as many as we can. So Am I Here says, how do you not take offense when someone discrim discriminates against you because of something you can't change like physical characteristics? Do you just ignore it uh, if, you, if you don't want to react in a carnal way? Is that is that the best way to do in your quick Christianity? Answer. Qu quick answer. Of course you ignore them. They're, they're not real bright. I don't want to offend them in their ignorance, but you should see right through that, that you don't need their approval. You don't need them to, to speak highly of you. God has accepted you. God has created you. God loves you. And the only way to overcome that rejection, that's just a form of rejection, is to see your acceptance Amen. in Jesus. Praise God. You know, I used to be that way about everything, offended about everything. You don't like me, my hair, on and on I could go, just put myself down even to this day. And it, I came to a place that, my God, Jesus loves me. Jesus died for me. They didn't die for you. They won't die for you. Jesus died for you, so you need to care what Jesus says and believe what Jesus says about you. And yeah, ignore them. And yes, you can ignore them if you pay attention to Jesus and his love for you. Amen. Amen. You know, God gave me a revelation of when Jesus was on the cross. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Did you know he felt that forsakenness? Yes, for us, as us. As us. Jesus didn't even die for us. He did, don't misunderstand me, but he died as, as us. us. And he embraced that total rejection. Yes. So he knows how you feel, so turn to him. Amen. Believe him. Amen. You know, I, I, I'd be lying if I said I don't care what anybody thinks about me. But in one sense, I care so much about what God thinks about me, it makes what people think about me that big. Amen. It's when you don't know what God thinks about you that you care so much about what these people think about you. Get away from those people. Amen. <laughs> They're poison, man. Find somebody that loves you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So Susan says, if there is a person that you carry offense towards, is it okay to speak to them about it? Uh, to tell, to let them know, or do you Great. take it to God and not share it with that person? Great question. Yeah. And in that series, and I started to teach this today, and I mean, it was amazing. They didn't want me to quit, but I had to quit because of time. Like, 
we're fixing to have to do now. But see, there's three kinds of offenses. I wasn't taught this. I've never heard this. Three kinds of offense. There's imaginary offense. You just, you imagine it in your own head. <laughs> I've had people come to me and tell me they've been offended at me for five years. <laughs> so true. And they discovered it was a lie. I didn't, I didn't even know it. They didn't need to tell me that. I don't want to know you've been offended at me for five years. It was in your head. It's imaginary. You have to learn to cast down vain imaginations. Number two, there's accidental offense. We accidentally offend each other. Yes. I, I love this lady and, and she's very sweet and, and real and kind. It would break my heart if I offended her. But we're human beings and I could mess up right here and maybe you can't create an me. accidental offense. <laughs> Just let well, you know maybe you not can. with Julianne, but others. Uh, I've created accidental offenses yes. and I could give you illustrations that crack you up and blow your mind at the same time. <laughs> I didn't mean it. On those, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, and Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12 says, Love covers the multitude of sins. Amen. If this person offended you and it wasn't malice, let it go. Let love cover it. Amen. Be merciful. Just let it go. The kind of offense that Jesus says we go to one another over is actual offense. Hmm. You did that to me and it was malice. You intended to hurt me. You intended to offend me. I'm supposed to confront that and that alone. And in the teaching that I have available, I teach you even how to do that. You have to do that very lovingly and proper protocol on being nice to people and kind, uh, even when you're offended. You don't want to create a unnecessary offense now in dealing with offense. <laughs> we've, we've mishandled things before in the past trying to fix an offense. You created more offense. <laughs> so you really need to know how do you go to somebody. And I don't have time to teach you how to do that right here, but I have taught it. Amen. And I think we need to get away from um, speculative imagination is how Andrew talks about it. Yep. Because Imaginary. when you get offended, you think they did it maliciously yeah. every time. Yeah, and they didn't. And they didn't. So you got to be sober about I've had people come it. to me and said that what you did over there offended me. And then I have to tell them I didn't even do that. <laughs> you think I did that. Right. You thought I did that. It's I didn't true. mean that. I was working on this right here. They thought I was doing something else. They thought I was conspiring against them and I was dealing with something else. Yeah. But it got into their head. Those things have to be done in your closet between you and Jesus and Jesus alone and cast it down or you'll create unnecessary offenses. Amen. And uh, Mike has a great question and I think it's probably one of the most difficult to answer in my uh, past experience. How do I handle offense from my spouse? Actually, that's not difficult at all. That right there is your training ground to learn how to deal with offense. You are supposed to walk with your spouse every day and, and deal with issues as they happen almost real time. And what happens in marriage is people don't deal with things, they ignore things, they get offended, they get hurt, they try to ignore it, and then by the time even the marriage blows up, we don't even know what's wrong because it goes back to things that happened 10 years ago. And so you need to be quick to repent and quick to forgive in the institution of marriage. Sue is the best thing that ever happened to me. I mean, second only to Jesus saving me, Sue as a partner, Sue is someone that, again, I have to deal with imaginary offenses. I thought she meant this. And so when I talk to her, it helps train me that I got to deal with my vain imaginations. Mm -hmm. I've accidentally offended Sue more than anybody. Why? Somebody says, you, you've offended your wife more than anybody? Yeah, I live with her 24-7. The odds are I'm going to mess up with her before Julianne right. because I'm only an hour with her. Right. I, I, I'm going to be with Sue forever. And so there's those accidental, we have fun with it now. We actually laugh when I do a piece of stupid or I say something. I come in one night and, man, as soon as I walked in the door, I said, my God, what stinks. And I heard around the corner, your supper. <laughs> she was cooking sauerkraut or something. It was terrible. But I didn't mean any offense. She had worked all day long cooking. That's terrible. It was an accident. What if she'd held it over me? So she learned to forgive. I learned to be honest. I'm sorry. If this is a guy that's calling, let me help you. Just repeat this after me. I was wrong. It's simple. Here's the next line. It'll save your marriage, your life. You'll be awesome. You'll be great. I was wrong, number one. And number two, I am sorry. Mm. 
Oh, hey, that's man. awesome. Praise <laughs> God. You've been married for a while. I could 41 tell. years. Oh, <laughs> praise God. I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> so we're coming down to the end. Uh, but Pastor Dwayne, would you pray for those people out there that maybe they don't realize they've been offended or maybe they don't know how to handle it? Lord, I just thank you that you're not condemning anybody right now. Amen. You have sent me by divine appointment. They're logged on right now by divine appointment. You're bringing this to our attention, not to put us down, not to condemn us, not to write us off, but to wake us up. And Lord, I just pray for spiritual wisdom and understanding that people would not self-destruct even that have lived in these offenses, but that they would pr process it, that they would simply go to Jesus right now and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Thank you that I'm already forgiven. And I just re receive the cleansing of my conscience. I just receive the power of the Holy Spirit testifying to my conscience of your love for me, your forgiveness and your cleansing. And now, Lord, I just ask you to help me to not take offense and to not only love your law and have great peace and nothing offend me, but now help people around me like Naaman's servants yes. that helped him process it. <clears throat> We need to do the right thing here. We just need to do what the prophet said yes. that would just help me. I've had people my whole life around me, and I'm so grateful that when I got weak and I took the bait, they heard the slam mm -hmm. of that trap, Amen. and they encouraged me on how to get out of the trap. And so I speak deliverance and victory and freedom from the trap of offense. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. And hey, just because you forgive somebody or let go of that offense doesn't, I think people are afraid that maybe they won't be held accountable or, or maybe it's like you're, I, I deal there's with a fear this. of that. I deal with this in the series on why don't people forgive? Right. That's one of about five reasons people struggle to forgive yeah. is they think, well, if I don't hang on to this, they'll think what they did is okay, okay and that they got away with it and nothing could be further from the truth. No. Amen. God is righteous and I promise you can trust him and give it to God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and I will repay. Amen. I need to just let things go to God yeah. and I deal with it in detail in that teaching. PastorDwayne.com. So go check it out, you guys, and I would encourage you to check into his books and, uh, and make sure... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fence right there. Uh, make sure to tune in tomorrow morning for live Bible study. We'll have Pastor Greg Moore. Uh, it will be at 7 a.m. bright and early mountain time. And so, Pastor Dwayne, thank you so much. Thank you. My privilege. My pleasure. Yeah. Praise God. So you guys have a great night, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. On October the 4th through the 8th at our facilities in Karis Bible College, Woodland Park, Colorado, we're going to have our 2021 Ministers Conference. And I tell you, this is for people that are in full-time ministry. You have special needs. We are going to be ministering specifically to you, and it's just going to be an awesome time. We've got our regular speakers, myself, Bob Nichols, Bob Yandian, Carrie Pickett, Greg Moore, Dwayne Sheriff, and this year our guest is Jesse Duplantis. And so I encourage you to make plans to join us. It's going to be a great time at our Karis Facilities, Woodland Park, Colorado, October the 4th through the 8th, our 2021 Minister's Conference.